In today's society, they're literally pushing men to become low value. There's not many high value men. And that's why the high value male movement was such a big thing. If you're doing any one of these things, bro, I'm gonna be honest, you're probably a low value beta cuck. And if you're getting triggered by anything I'm saying right now, you're exactly who I'm talking to. You're low value. But yo, let's jump into this video. And before we hit this video, yo, make sure to hit the like button and make sure to subscribe because I give you guys dating and relationship content and how to be a man in today's society. But yo, let's jump into this video. So one of the first things that makes you low value simply is if you're a pushover, bro. Most guys are a pushover that get offended with every single thing, okay? In today's society, you're not taught to defend yourself. You're not taught to be a man. Actually, if you, if you punch on the face, you're looked at as crazy nowadays, right? But I remember this. I had this one instant, right? I was in a fraternity. And if you guys don't know about fraternities, one of the biggest things about fraternities, I feel like they're one of the biggest, like, dick and BD energy contests. Bro, it's just a bunch of alpha males with the, who have a bunch of egos. <laughs> exactly. Like, everyone just wants to be the top guy, okay? In fraternities. And that's one thing. It's a good and a pro. So one thing when I first joined my fraternity, guys used to make fun of me all the time. They used to crack little jokes. But you know when jokes get a little too far, they get a little too personal. And so what ends up happening was, bro, one guy, he said something crazy to me. I'm a, I'm a chill guy. I don't be doing much crazy things, right? But you know, I was with some bad joints. The girls were feeling me. I brought them to the party and everything. So, you know, it's different when a guy says something to you by yourself and when he says something to in front of girls so he can look like he got a bigger ego than you. Woo! So he looks like he has a bigger dick than you. Woo! I said, I had to check him right there. Yo, who are you talking to like that? All right, cool. End of story. He walked away. Then he went to the group chat the next day. Talk started talking crazy. Oh, this, oh, this, oh, this, oh, that. Me, I'm not the type of guy to, to back down to anything. I'm not the type of guy to go back and forth in the group chat online beef. Y'all never see me beefing online. So what ends up happening is, yo, I call him up. I was like, yo, meet me at this spot. So we pull up. I pull up to the frat house right then there on site. Bang, stole him, right? But then after that, we wrestled in all that tussle, right? And it was over. But one thing I noticed, that majority of people my frat before then used to always make fun of me. Used always clown me. Used to call me out my names. They used to call me little O, this, blah, 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 skinny as hell. After that day, nobody in my frat has ever said anything to me ever again till this day. And what does that mean? See, most guys are pushovers. See, one time, you might have to steal a guy one time. But when you do that, trust me, they're not going to bully you again, bro. If you steal and give him one good... Uh, click, give him one thing when you feel in his jaw, bro. Nobody's gonna push step up to you because one thing about bullies, one thing about guys who like to make fun of guys, they make fun of guys who are pushovers who are not gonna say anything, okay? So remember that. Stop being a pushover and stand up for yourself, bro. Number two is I, guys that play it safe, bro. You're a man, bro. You only have one life to live. Why the hell are you playing it safe, dog, bro? Like. I remember, for instance, right, the most guys' dreams in this world, what are they? They want to have a threesome. They want to have a three-way. They want to get along with two girls at one time. You feel me? And, yeah, every guy can do that. And I remember the first time that ever happened to me. What happened was a girl I was messing with, and we was on a little trip. We was messing together, and I seen one of her other friends. She was feeling me, too. I could see she was choosing me the whole time. Went up to her and started talking to crazy. But my friends at that time was like, yo, bro, you already got one right here. Why, why are you worried about this other one? Why you be greedy? You just call it. You got guaranteed thing at home. I'm like, cool it. Do you not know me? I'm one of the biggest risk takers. So I go up to her talking crazy, spinning my game. You know what? Next thing you know, whew, everything goes down. I finally get to get that off my checklist. And it's all because I was, I was taking that risk and talking to her like that. Taking that risk. I had one girl right here, another girl right there. And instead of just playing it safe with one girl, I try to get both. And that's one way I was able to do that, right? And then even that, right? Playing it safe. Like when I first started, when I first graduated college, I was trying to figure out how to make the bread, how to make the cash. You guys know, as a man, you have to always level up your income. So I went online. I'm thinking like, how can I make some money? So I check up something you guys are probably familiar it's called Amazon FBA. And basically, you, you build a product online, you get a product from China, you send it to Amazon, they fulfill everything for you. They send it to all the customer. And since Amazon already has a platform, you can just sell it off of there, right? 
So that was the big hype. Yo, if you do Amazon FBA, you're gonna make millions, you're gonna make this, you're gonna make that, right? So what I do, I took the risk. I think I put about five, 6,000 to Amazon at first. I took that risk, my product was doing all right, it didn't do nothing, then I put another three, 4K. And so my project, my product didn't pop. And then a few months later, it actually started to take off and I actually made some money. But then what happened, I picked the bad product, it was a seasonal product, right? So it didn't go how I wanted and I ended up losing all my money, right? And so what happened is I basically was like, hey, I came to the conclusion, like if I start a business, I'm gonna do something that I'm strongly passionate about and that I can be consistent. Cause with an Amazon product, one of the biggest thing I failed on is that I really didn't have a passion for the product. I didn't feel comfortable selling it. It was just a get rich click scream. So when I end up doing something, I end up trying to figure out stuff that I end up loving. And then I was like, hey, let me just talk about YouTube. So when I started YouTube, man, I, I wasn't making anything for a good two, three years on YouTube, right? But I was able to stay consistent for years, 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 just because I did something that I love and I was able to build an audience that, like you, bro, because I simply love it. And most of you guys, you guys could probably hear my passion when I talk about anything on YouTube, okay? And so that's one thing. Taking that risk helped me to take another risk in life. So bro, stop playing it safe. You only got one life to live. What the hell do you want? Do you want to be a, a regular guy with a nine to five? Nothing wrong with nine to five. You gotta get your bread. But is that what you're gonna do for the rest of your life? You don't see nothing bigger? You don't have no other passion? You just wanna be with one girl for the rest of your life? Bro, you just wanna drive that Toyota Camry? Yeah. I know this stepping stones, but that's why you have goals. That's why you have vision. Stop playing it safe. Take that risk, dog. Number three, another sign that you're low value. Look at the woman you with, bro. Look at her. Bro, what if I told you that girl is literally a representation of you? Oh, you got a girl. But she was a three or four that everyone was getting. Everyone got pound town through her, bro. All you know, all your bros got it. Or, 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 or she might even not be a three or four. Yo, she's bringing you headache. She's bringing you hell. She's always questioning you. She's trying to feminize you. Oh, you only had one girl, and that's who you picked. Whoa, she's still posting hella Instagram pictures that looking crazy. She cheated on you, bro. Oh, she don't even look that good. Remember, that's a representation of you, and that's all I gotta say. You know if a girl's low value. You know, I don't gotta say it twice. Look at that. You sleeping there? She overweight. Is she saying you fat over? Ah, we don't even gotta go there. If you guys are struggling with your dating life, yo, here's my Instagram right here. DM me right now. I wanna hear what your what's going on, and I'm gonna give you some advice, bro. Number four is bro, you're low value. Honestly, if you spend all your money on drip, oof. You got all the shoes, you got the Balenciagas, you got the Gucci, you got all the Yeezys. Ooh, you got the LV, you fly as hell. Oh, what, what are those Cartier's? Ooh, you got the drip, but your bank account says zero. <laughs> but you still broke as hell. You don't have a car, you're taking the bus, but you dripped out, you fly. But what, you know the worst part is, you dripped out. But anytime you go to a party, anytime you go to a club, you, you stand on the wall with your one drink, bro. You stand on the wall like, damn, bro, they don't know this is Balenciaga's. They don't know this is Gucci, bro. But what? You spent all this money. Now you got nothing in your bank account. You got nothing in the future. You work. You work in your little job. And then now what? You're going to spend on some, some Montclair's. You're going to spend on some Cartier's. You're going to keep on spending all these clothing. And what does that do? And you, you, you don't even look that appealing to most people. You buy all the streetwear just to what? To look appealing to other broke guys? Girls don't even find some of that so attractive. Okay? So, bro, stop spending all your money. Bro, save up. Because I tell you, if you ever go broke, no one's here to save you. You're a man at the end of the day, bro. You should all figure out how you can get more money, spending less money, and just investing. Because I, <laughs> right now, it don't sound sexy. Having a drift sounds sexy. Eating that McDonald's sounds sexy. But in the future, who you're gonna see what's sexy. Number four is bro, why are you being a feminist ass man, bro? You wanna hear, you know every single every single legal system now, spanosexual. I don't even know what half of these are. Bro, you're saying fat phobic. You're saying, oh no, dad bobs are cool. Bro, you're supporting every single movement. Oh, 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 you you you're passive. You let women lead you, bro. You're a Feminine ass beta male. Bro, you're a low volume hell. And you know it. If you get triggered, I hope you get triggered. 
I hope you get triggered because that means I'm talking to you, okay? I kind of just went on a tangent. I was a little passionate about this today. But you guys like this video, make sure to check out this video right here where I talk about the biggest weakness that's destroying men in today's society.